All right, hello everybody. So uh, for this lecture, we're going to start off by talking about the neutron interaction probability. So uh, broadly speaking, so as you'll remember, sigma, the macroscopic total, the total macroscopic cross section, sigma t, um, is the probability of interacting per unit distance, right? And so thus, sigma uh, sigma t dx is the probability of interacting within a region dx. Um, and so uh, we, can, we can demonstrate this or we can, uh, we can define a p uh, of x as uh, related to uh, uh, dx. So uh, just to say so basically what I'm trying to say here uh, is that, and the, the relative, like, so like basic, ah, uh, sorry, <laughs> getting caught up on my words here. So um, we can say that sigma t of dx is the probability of interacting within a, a small region. So we can call this p of x um, dx, uh, or p, the probability of interacting, sorry, within a given region dx is sigma t uh, dx, OK? Um, now, the likelihood of getting to that region, as we discussed last, last lecture, is given by the relative intensity, right? So the, um, we can define um, the relative probability, so p of r, the probability uh, at a given depth x, is equal to, um, oops, so I'll just call this relative intense, uh, so this is given as um, uh, the ratio of the intensity at i of x divided by uh, the ratio at, at i of 0, i naught, uh, which then just equals e to the negative uh, capital s sigma t times x. Oops. If I can sell sigma right. Okay. So it's this, uh, it's this expression here, it's the probability of interacting, uh, or that's the, that's the relative in intensity. Um, so the probability that it'll actually, uh, that a neutron will interact at a given depth per unit change in x is the multiplication of these two probabilities, right? So it has to both it has some probability of getting to that density or getting getting to that depth and then has a probability of interacting dx once it gets there and so um, actually let me leave that uh, up and um, so the uh, I'll just say I'll call this the probability of interacting at a given depth x. Um, this is going to be uh, p of x dx, right? So we're only in some small, uh, some small thin window. And this is the probability that will, or the relative intensity, right? So the P, P of R times, uh, P of R of X, P sub R of X, uh, times the probability that we interact at that, inter at, at, at that density, or at that locate, at that depth, sorry, um, P of, uh, P sub DX of X. And so thus, we have this is equal to E to the negative sigma sub T times X times sigma, yeah, sigma sub t dx, 
okay? Um, and so this gives us a nice expression of, uh, you know, over this whole thickness of a block, uh, what we can, um, uh, the probability that we're going to ac actually uh, interact at any given distance inside that block. And so we can define the mean free path in that block um, as lambda. So we'll call, now we're reusing the, the lambda phrase, but this lambda is the mean free path. Um, and so, uh, oops, wow, I'm uh, mistyping <laughs> all my Greek letters today. Nope. Lambda, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, this is the mean free path is in fact the probability uh, weighted by the depth. And so uh, we're just going to do an integral um, an integral weight. So that means that we take the probability and we multiply it by the actual depth x. And so here we say lambda equals the integral from 0 to infinity, if we have an infinite block, uh, is that right? I think that's right, of x uh, times p of x dx. Um, and so this is itself equal to um, Right, this is uh, p of x is equal to e to the negative uh, macroscopic cross section, macroscopic total cross section uh, times x uh, um, times uh, sigma t, which is constant, so we'll bring it out front of the integral uh, times dx. Okay, and so if we go ahead and perform that integral, uh, we'll want to integrate that by parts. And so if you'll recall your integration by parts, if we have, let me just put this by parts sidebar. Um, so uh, if we have the expression, uh, oops. Uh, integral of u dv, this is equal to u v minus the uh, integral of uh, v du. Okay? So all we have to do is get our uh, get our terms in, into that expression. And so, uh, uh, not so bad. So, for example, uh, or not for example, in this case, right? So we'll want to say that u is equal to x, which, oops. Uh, so that means that du is equal to dx, and then, um, v, we'll say, is equal to um, and so v is going to be equal to um, the fraction of uh, negative 1 over uh, sigma, oops, or the better way to do this, sorry, <laughs> Uh, jumping ahead of myself. So we can, we'd actually want to start with dv, so we'll say dv is equal to e to the uh, negative sigma t sigma sub t uh, times 
x dx. And then if we integrate both of those sides, then we get v is equal to um, uh, right the negative sigma t comes out. So we get minus 1 over uh, the macroscopic cross sec the total macroscopic cross section. And since this is an exponential, we just get e to the negative sigma t times x. Okay, so now we have expressions for for both. Uh, oops, <laughs> um, I guess this needs to be on a different line. So now we have expressions for both u and v and everything uh, and db and all of these uh, and all of these pieces. So if we go ahead and plug u and v in uh, for what we have for these pieces and in the integration in integration by parts, um, we can see that uh, lambda um, uh, is equal to, so it's u times v, so it's um, x times uh, negative uh, sigma t. So this is x, uh, or we'll do uh, this top bit first, because we also have the sigma t from our probability expression up here. So we have sigma sub t times x uh, times the fraction uh, negative 1 over s sigma sub t um, uh, e to the negative sigma sub t uh, times x. Uh, and this is evaluated, of course, at uh, at from zero to negative infinity, or zero to infinity, sorry, uh, zero to, um, and then minus this integral, the integral of uh, v du. So this is the integral. Well, we should take the sigma t out front first. So minus sigma t times the integral of, uh, and then we also have uh, minus 1 over uh, sigma t is also constant, so we can bring that out of the integral frac of minus 1 uh, slash sigma of t plus integral 0 to um, uh, infinity. Uh, yep. Of <laughs> e to the negative sigma sub t x dx. Oops, and something went wrong. What went wrong here? Oops, yeah, sorry, this should be. There we go. Okay, so that's our expression, um, our initial expression. Um, so this, let me copy this again. And then. I'll paste it back in. And so uh, a lot of these sigma t bits cancel. So that's good. We can get rid of those. So um, we can be left with negative x. And then this is now a plus. Uh, and we'll get rid of that. Um, and so. We have lambda equals negative x e to the sigma t x evaluated at 0 to infinity plus the integral from 0 to infinity of 
e to the negative sigma t x dx, okay? Um, and so if we do this, we can go ahead and see that um, uh, right, so the first bit is we need to know where we have to take the limit um, as uh, from at infinity. So we'll take the limit uh, as uh, x goes to um, infinity of this expression plus now the in the other side or sorry minus uh, oops, and this is a minus x out here uh, sorry no minus x minus now uh, zero times uh, e to the negative sigma times zero is going to be zero, right? So this is uh, uh, minus, basically a minus zero. Um, so that doesn't really affect things. Plus, um, when we do this integral, uh, we, uh, again, we get um, uh, e to the negative sigma, or if up here, sorry, uh, uh, we'll get uh, 1 over, sorry, let me, I sort of skipped a step, so, above, so if we actually take this integral here, what we get is um, basically, uh, we get the fraction, uh, again, negative 1 over sigma sub t times uh, e to the negative x, or e to the negative uh, sigma t of x. And now this is evaluated at Um, and this is evaluated at 0 to uh, infinity, right? So we just have evaluated that integral here. And then when we go to plug in the uh, values, it's, um, again, so at negative infinity, um, we e to the negative sigma t is 0, and so we get um, uh, plus zero minus, um, and at uh, e to the negative sigma t x, uh, or when x is zero, that's one, and so this is um, uh, frac minus one over sigma sub t. And so uh, the annoying bit here is still this limit. Um, and that limit is, uh, as we'll find out here. So, so what we can do is we can bring this other piece to the front. Um, so this is just, let's get rid of these zeros because they don't matter. And we can do. Um, uh, 1 over sigma t uh, minus uh, x or the limit of uh, x uh, e to the negative sigma t of x as, uh, as x goes to infinity. Now, um, the problem with this is that you end up with uh, 0 times infinity piece. And so what we want to do, <laughs> oops, and actually, oh no, this expression, that's negative, sorry. Uh, the exponent here is negative. I messed that up. 
a while ago, actually. And yeah, last one. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, what we want to do um, is we need to apply Le Hopital's rule uh, to this expression. Okay. And so when we to be able to get a uh, since it's an indeterminate form, and so uh, when we do that we can say that this limit is actually equal to the fraction um, x, and then we can take this to the negative 1 power, uh, and uh, then we get um, the limit as x goes to infinity of x over e to the negative sigma t, um, and then we can take the derivative of both the top and the bottom here, and so um, we do that. Um, we end up with, uh, so let me do frac d, dx, just to be clear. Oops. Um, <laughs> Uh, via Le Hopital's rule, and uh, oops. let me evaluate those. <laughs> uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Quickly, and then um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And so when we actually evaluate that d dx of x is just equal to 1, uh, and then d dx of uh, uh, sigma t x is, of course, um, is then sigma t t of e to the sigma t x. Um, and so this expression uh, this, as x goes to infinity, is also going to go to infinity, and so 1 over infinity is 0, and so then we're left with the expression lambda equals fraction 1 over uh, sigma sub t um, uh, minus zero, and thus, uh, voila, what we have is uh, lambda equals one over the total cross section. And so that, that's it. So the mean free path uh, of a neutron flying through material is one over the total cross section of that material. Um, and so the average that just means that the average distance that your particle is going to travel is that is one over the uh, is one over the cross section, right? And so the units work out uh, since sigma t or all the cross all the macroscopic cross sections have units of uh, one over distance. This mean free path lambda is uh, is has units of just dis distance, and so uh, you know, and so you can. Since uh, neutrons, uh, or since neutron cross sections are additive, this means that if you have two cross sections, um, uh, uh, or if you have two species x and y, and they're and they're in a material together, right? You've got so you've got water, which is hydrogen and um, uh, hydrogen and oxygen together. Uh, the total cross section would be the the uh, the cross sections of those two. The, the two macroscopic cross sections individually. So putting this down so we can say um, neutron uh, cross sections are added. So for example, um, if we have the macroscopic cross section of Uh, math. 
of a material made up of x and y components. Uh, this is just the macroscopic cross-section of x plus the macroscopic cross-section of y. And so um, nominally weighted, which means that these are weighted by their number density. So if you wanted to do this in microscopic cross-section, it's the number density of x um, times the microscopic cross-section of x uh, plus the number density of y times the microscopic cross-section of y, as we saw from our last lecture. OK? All right, so that is what I mean uh, by their additive. So if you've got a material, you can easily figure, figure out um, the, uh, uh, the mean free path of a material, right? Because now you, you just add the two together, and then you uh, take the inverse. Uh, or you add the components together and take the inverse. All right. Um, Cool. cool. So now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about uh, an important concept, which is neutron flux. So the flux is one of the key parameters of nuclear engineering. Um, and so to, dis it, to describe and understand flux, imagine that we have many, many uh, monoenergetic neutrons flying around. Um, in all directions. So if I go back to the board here, right? So I might have uh, uh, like neutrons going every which way, um, you know, in all directions. It's complete chaos. Uh, and, uh, and we're not in one of these idealized systems that we were talking about before. Where we've got a collimated beam of monoenergetic neutrons all flying around in one direction. Um, so uh, imagine that this were still in some sort of material, right? Um, in some sort of uh, box or like in some sort of shape, right? Uh, so maybe we've got neutrons flying around in water and they're all going in different directions or carbon or uranium or something. Um, there would still be a collision density, right? Because even though they're not going in the same direction, there's still a probability. They're each going in their own direction, and they still have a probability of interacting. And so uh, that this is what the flux seeks to capture. So the collision density, in this case, uh, would still be, as we discussed before, um, Right, we used F for collision density. It's still the total cross section um, times T, uh, or the total cross section sigma of T uh, times the intensity, which is equal to um, uh, sigma of T times the number density of the neutron times the velocity of the neutrons. Okay, so since we're assuming for the moment that they're monoenergetic, um, uh, you know, V is all the same. OK. So with this, we actually define the flux uh, is defined as, or we denote flux as the Greek letter phi, lowercase phi. Some, um, and it has uh, units of neutrons per centimeters squared per second. Um, and we define phi as this special term NV, right? So it's the n number density of the neutrons um, uh, 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 basically divide, multiplied by the uh, speed at which the neutrons are going. So, um, and of course, uh, is um, has units since it's a number density it has units of neutrons per centimeter cubed um, and uh, 
and v is a velocity, right? So this is just uh, this just has units of centimeters per second. So that's how you end up with flux having these units. Um, and this represents, so the flux really represents the, um, the number of neutrons that are traveling through an area per second, right? So if you have some surface area, if you have some sphere, some cube, the number of neutrons streaming through the surface of that cube or the surface of that sphere is, uh, is the flux. Um, and so these neutrons are flying all over the place. And if we imagine that, right, so uh, it's if, if you were to draw a little, uh, a little ball around this, um, around these neutrons, and you were to count the number of crossings uh, of this, uh, from the neutrons of this sphere in a given unit of time, OK? Um, all right. <laughs> so that being said, one thing that we kind of glossed over before was that the current is actually a vector, OK? So remember, if uh, in our drawing, uh, when we had one beam, um, we had neutrons all traveling in the same direction, and they were incident on oops, some disc-shaped foil target, right? Um, some thin foil. So if that's our foil, and then this is our one beam that's mono-energetic, right? Um, so really, if we were going to be proper about the this whole thing, um, uh, we should have done this with uh, vector notation rather than um, rather than uh, scalar notation, right? So we should have said that vector i is equal to the intent. The initial intensity is still a uh, scalar, but this is equal to uh, or but it's i naught times x hat, which is then equal to n naught v naught x hat. So this is the key difference uh, between why flux and uh, flux and current are different, right? Because current is this vector quantity that has a that has a direction, and, and flux is a scalar quantity that um, it is it has any direction. Okay, so um, we can imagine. Uh, let for, so, for example, um, in that previous here, I'll put this down. This is our one beam case. Oh, come on. So. I thought I would do underline, but I think it's not. Um, so that's our one beam case, right? We just have one beam coming in from the side. Um, uh, if we go ahead and do a two beam case, come on, paste, 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 paste. Uh, previous. Okay, not copy and paste. That would be really annoying. Um, okay, all right. All right, so if I have a two beam case here, let's say we have two beams coming in uh, directly apart, directly um, on opposite sides uh, of the foil. Uh, so if they were to hit, um, they would be hitting head on. Right? So they're coming in. I know my drawing here is not the greatest. 
Um, uh, so they're coming in from opposite, completely opposite directions. One's traveling in positive x and one is traveling in negative x. And so if we wanted to represent the intensities here, right, this has an intensity. Let's say they have equal intensity, um, uh, right, uh, of n naught v naught or i naught. Um, then what we would get is, if I go back to this, Copy this. So if I have two beams, um, so our vector is equal to i naught x hat. So that's the first beam, like before. Plus we have a second beam, which is i naught, but now traveling in the negative x direction. Um, and so uh, that leaves us with a zero current, OK? Um, but just because it has a zero current doesn't mean it has a zero flux, right? For flux, we count everything. Um, and so, uh, oops, let me. Uh, and now, if we go back, now let's suppose that this case um, is slightly different, and we have two angled beam or two beams coming in at an angle okay so it's no longer um, uh, so it's no longer uh, so I'm gonna do just to like oops uh, so let's give give ourselves some latitude there and then we've got neutrons coming in uh, from this direction. S same i naught, same n naught v naught, but with a different direction. Okay, and this angle, oops, let's call this angle theta. Okay. Um, so if we do that, then uh, we still have our same beam from before, but now we've got a slightly, uh, we've got these coming in at uh, negative x, but the cosine of that um, plus uh, the uh, plus the uh, negative sine of x or sine negative sine y uh, sine y hat, right? Because now we're in two dimensions, and so our expression for our intensity. Um, it's going to be um, so now we still have this term from before but now we have uh, uh, and let's do this in terms of um, we can do it this way so um, uh, this is we now have the cosine of theta uh, here <laughs> and um, we have a y we have a y hat term um, and since we're coming in negative so we'll have i not um, uh, and it's the sine of theta times negative y hat. Okay? And so if we do that, um, we can consolidate the x hat terms and simply get um, 1 minus cosine theta of x hat minus sine theta y hat. Okay? Um, and that's what our current looks like. So uh, the flux is actually the surface integral of the current. So given these three cases, we could take the surface integral. So that's what, what's going on here. Um, so let me say that. Flux is the
Um, and so we can define this as, um, so thus we could define the flux as uh, phi equals um, uh, uh, in our FOIL case, um, at least, <laughs> uh, one over 2a, right, because we defined a as uh, being the, the, the area of one, one half of our uh, uh, foil, uh, times the surface integral of um, i and then d times the dA, the, the unit uh, where dA is a vector, OK? Um, and I'll say that. Oops. With A as the area of one side of the foil. OK? Um, so uh, because of this, um, what we have is that the uh, surface integral of d uh, vector a has to equal 2 times the scalar area, um, which means that uh, the, uh, the uh, the vector A, our area vector, is going to be A of uh, uh, x hat uh, plus a of negative x hat. Okay, so those two must bo both be true. So in the one beam case, right, this becomes really easy. Um, so. or relatively easy, I should say. So if we wanted to find out the flux for one beam, we would say that phi equals um, fraction of one over uh, 2a, right? We've only got one beam coming in, um, times O int, or the, the surface integral of n naught times v naught uh, times uh, d the vector a uh, and uh, oops uh, uh, <laughs> okay right so that's that um, so that's what the flux is equal to um, or that and now we just need to solve for that integral. Um, and uh, uh, which, uh, since we only have the uh, x hat, the positive x hat part, um, not the negative x hat part, um, on uh, our piece, or on our, uh, in this, right, sorry. Um, that means that this only gets evaluated as um, uh, uh, with, or it, this, right, both, sorry. <laughs> uh, excuse me. That is not correct. Um, so n naught, v naught are both constants, so they come out of the integral. Um, 
and then we're just left with the um, this and in the inner the service integral of dA, which is of course as above equal to two a. So then um, uh, that's how we end up with uh, the uh, flux equals the fraction of one over two a times n not v not times two a which then of course cancels. I wrote pho, I must be hungry. <laughs> and oops. And so those two a's cancel. And so in the base case, this is how we know for our monoenergetic beam that the flux is just equal to n not v not. All right? Um, uh, uh, now, in our two beams running against each other case, um, we have something slightly different. So, so right, so if we go back to um, not the angled case, but, uh, oops, oh, yep, sorry. So in our two beams where, I guess I got rid of it, uh, where they're directly opposed, um, what we have is a sl something slightly more complicated because now we need to incorporate the um, uh, x hat component. So uh, we have to start this off. I'll just uh, put in the expression from here. So this uh, uh, piece, but we wanna we don't want to cancel all the things out yet. So phi is equal to um, uh, the one over two a times the surface integral of uh, uh, n not oops n not v not uh, plus oh, x hat plus um, or rather minus <laughs> uh, or I should do plus plus n not v not minus x hat um, uh, times or D of uh, A X hat um, uh, plus uh, plus oh yeah plus A uh, hat, uh, oops, plus a uh, minus x hat, or a times minus x hat. Let's see, did I do that right? Nope. Okay, um, and so when you go ahead and uh, integrate that, um, oops. And this should have another parentheses around it. Sorry. So when you go ahead and integrate that, you can integrate out by both pieces um, uh, individually. And uh, you'll find that eventually, if you, or you'll find if you work through the math here, um, uh, the um, that phi um, is equal to two times n not v not, and so um, and if you do the same, you, you can find find the same result if you go if you work through the angled case um, uh, by 
having pieces drop in there in the, the well the sines and the cosines will integrate out okay uh cool all right well thank you very much everybody i think that's all for today have a good one